Hi, I'm Dan Cordopassi of TSG Multimedia. Welcome to Model Railroading 101. As usual, I'm in front of the camera, and John is behind the camera making everything look good. I'm doing my job. In this episode, we're going to talk about bridges. Like always, this is an introduction and an overview, so it's not going to be possible to cover every style of bridge that's ever been built. We're going to focus on the most common ones. A lot of railroads had standard bridge designs, but even with that, most bridges are built to suit a specific site, so the variety is nearly endless. Also, for this particular topic, we're not going to talk about signal bridges. We'll cover that in an upcoming episode about signals. We're going to focus on bridges that carry rails and maybe mention a highway bridge or two, and that's about it. So let's get started. So why do railroads need bridges? Well, the real world is not completely flat, even in areas that may look flat at first glance. There are streams and rivers that cut through the terrain, as well as man-made obstacles like roads and other railroads. Yep. So a bridge can be anything from a short span over a drainage ditch to a spectacular structure that soars over a mountain canyon. Most mainline railroads typically have grades of no more than 1-2%, to 2 so railroads can't dip down into low areas as easily as a regular highway road. Bridges are one way for a railroad to maintain an even grade profile. It's possible to build a model railroad on a perfectly flat table or a piece of plywood with no bridges at all, but adding a bridge or two is a way to make the railroad look more interesting. Bridges along with a canyon or river or other terrain feature can also serve as scene dividers. Oh, right. Yeah, because I mean, you know, our model railroads are small compared to the real world, so if you have something like a bridge and a little stream, it can make one side seem like it's farther away from the other side, even if it's just a couple of feet. So let's talk about some terminology. There are four main aspects to bridge design. The type of span, the type of material, the placement of the support structure in relation to the roadbed, and the form. Bridge spans have three basic design types. Simple, continuous, and cantilever. Bridges can also be made of a combination of these types. So simple is generally a structure that's supported on both ends. Continuous is a structure that's supported in multiple places. And cantilever is a bridge that extends out over space and is supported on one end. Railroad bridges have been built from stone, wood, metal, and concrete. Some of the oldest surviving railroad bridges are built of stone. Those are most common in the eastern part of the United States. In model form, stone bridges can be built from plastic kits, plaster castings, or other materials. Wood was another common bridge building material, especially in the old days. Wooden trestles are an almost iconic symbol of old time railroading, but other types of bridges have also been built from wood. Wooden bridges can be modeled from real wood or from styrene. Metal, and especially steel, has been a common bridge material for decades and is still in use. Steel bridges can take on an almost infinite variety of forms. Steel bridges are commonly modeled using styrene, plastic, or sometimes brass. Concrete bridges are common on highways and are used on railroads as well. Concrete can be convincingly modeled using styrene or plaster castings. Bridges can also be built from various combinations of materials, such as a steel bridge supported by concrete pilings. So now let's talk about the relationship of the support structure to the roadbed. There are deck, pony, and through bridges. A deck bridge has the support structure below the rails. That would be like this one here. I realize there's no actual rails on this right now. I see ties, though, the or ties, supports, yeah. right? So the, this is the track surface up here, and then this, this girder to support the bridge is underneath. Pony bridge has the supporting structure on either side of the rails, but the support pieces are not connected at the top. That would be like this one. That one does have rails. It does have rails, but as you can see, the, the support structure extends up along the sides, but it's not over. Mm -hmm. And a through bridge is like a pony bridge, only the support structure is taller and connected over the top of the rails, so the train goes through it. I've seen through truss bridges. I'm mm -hmm. sure we'll talk about that later, though. We will. Which type is used sometimes depends on what's below. For example, if another railroad or a highway or a navigable river is below the bridge, it may be necessary to put the supporting structure on top for clearance. So one of the most common types of railroad bridges is the girder bridge. These are all examples of girder bridges. These two are deck girder bridges, and this is, I guess you could call it a pony girder, sometimes called a through girder. Um, this is a double track bridge. This is one that I cobbled together myself uh, from an old layout, which is why it doesn't have any track on it right now. But one track would go here and one there. And the other two are single track bridges. 
Truss bridges are another common type. Trusses are pieces of support structure made from smaller parts. There are numerous kinds of truss bridge designs. Many have special names like how truss or Pratt truss, having to do with the arrangement of the structural members. All of them generally have an open framework. Most modern truss bridges are made of metal, though wood has also been used to build trusses. This particular one here is a through truss. I realize this is kind of a beat out looking model. This is something I got when I was a kid and built long, long ago. <laughs> <laughs> and it's been kind of rattling around in various boxes for many years. It doesn't look too bad. Yeah. It's, it's just a demonstration purpose, right? So. Right. So anyway, this is an example of an arch bridge. Arch bridges use an arch as part of the main support structure. Arch bridges can be built of metal components or stone or concrete. Actually, technically, because this one has diagonal bracing, um, it could be considered a pair of cantilever spans. Hmm. I think technically uh, arch bridges aren't supposed to have diagonals for some reason. Um, but anyway, <laughs> the point is is that there's this, this curved thing under here, and that is what's giving the support. The curved thing is called an arch, Dan. Yes. That's that's what I was talking about. I, I learned that in my other class, geometry. Yeah, right. <laughs> cantilever bridges have structure that extends beyond the bridge supports. Um, cantilever bridges can be made to span longer distances than simple spans. Suspension bridges have a road surface that is typically supported by cables. In North America, anyway, suspension bridges are more often used for highways than railroads, though the San Francisco Bay Bridge once had electrified interurban tracks on the lower deck. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, I think probably the most famous suspension bridge, or one of the most famous suspension bridges in the world, probably is the Golden Gate Bridge, right? Right. I know it's not a railroad bridge, but that counts. Oh, sure. Yeah. Many railroad bridges use a combination of different types of spans. Uh, for example, a bridge may use girders on the approach span, and then a truss for the main span, and then more girders on the other end. I know one that uses some kind of a girder and then a truss. Farwell Bridge in Niles Canyon is That's like that. That's very true, yeah. yeah. So let's talk about bridge decks. Uh, not to be confused with a deck bridge, a bridge deck is basically the stuff on top that supports the rails. Uh -huh. um, all railroad bridges have a bridge deck of some kind. Railroad bridges typically either have an open deck or a ballasted deck. An open deck bridge is like what's on the screen right now, has ties that are fixed to the bridge structure. Usually the bridge ties are spaced more closely together than ties out on the main line. And if you're standing on an open deck bridge, which is not something I'd recommend for safety reasons, you can usually see down through the bridge structure into whatever is below. A ballasted deck bridge has a closed superstructure that forms a channel. The channel is filled with rock ballast, and the ties are laid on top of that, just the same way track would be laid anywhere else. One advantage of the ballasted deck is that for track maintenance purposes, it can be treated the same way as any other piece of track. Bridges need to have supports to hold them up. End supports are called abutments, and are a combination support and retaining wall. A bridge abutment supports one end of the bridge and also keeps the earth behind it from moving. Shorter bridges may only have abutments and no intermediate supports. Bridge piers are used to support multi-span bridges in between the abutments. Bridge piers are often made of concrete, but can also be made of stone or other materials. Bents are another kind of mid-span support. A bent is more or less a flat structure that is placed crosswise under the bridge span at intervals to help hold it up. The classic railroad wooden trestle typically consists of a set of wooden bents holding up the track structure. More modern bridges can have bents made of metal or other materials. Many bridges also have bridge shoes that go in between the bridge itself and the supports or abutments. This is a small detail that's easy to overlook, but using them will add realism to a bridge scene. Bridges that span waterways sometimes have movable sections to allow vessels to pass when the railroad is not in use. Movable bridges typically either pivot, swing up, or lift up. This bridge in the SBHRS N-Scale layout in Santa Clara is a swing-up bridge. The steel bridge in Portland is an example of a lift-up bridge. Another thing that's kind of like a bridge is a culvert. Culverts are built to allow water to flow under the roadbed or under a road without undermining the track. They can be used on an active stream or over a channel that may only seasonally or periodically be filled with water. A culvert can be as simple as a piece of pipe laid crosswise under the roadbed. They can also look like small bridges. 
Things like this are relatively easy to model and can add interest and realism to a model railroad, even if you're modeling flat territory. A viaduct is a type of bridge that carries a road or railroad over an area of low ground. Though not technically a bridge, a causeway basically serves the same function. A causeway is an elevated embankment with a road or railroad on the top. The Yellow Causeway carries the Union Pacific Martinez subdivision between Davis and Sacramento, California, an area that is flooded at certain times of the year. So I know I said I wasn't going to talk too much about highway bridges, but one thing to remember is that highway bridges can sometimes be constructed in the same ways as railroad bridges. Sometimes spectacular scenes result when a highway bridge and a railroad bridge cross the same obstacle in close proximity, like the scene at Pulga, California in the Feather River Canyon. We almost died taking these shots. Yes. Don't try this at home. Before you go on, I just want to explain that comment I made. If you want to see how we almost died taking that shot at Pulga, watch Chasing Trains. I think it was episode two, Feather River Canyon. (laughs) Many railroads had standard designs for many structures, including bridges. This little bridge on my layout is based on a standard Southern Pacific design for a ballasted deck trestle. Trestles like this were very common and many are still in place today. They could be built for single or double track and made to any length necessary. This HO kit by BLMA is an example of a concrete bridge that serves the same purpose. While having a spectacular bridge or two is great, having a few little bridges like this here and there can really increase the realism of a layout. Generally, I find that the more ordinary looking stuff there is, the more believable it is. It might look fantastic to see six railroad bridges crossing the same canyon at different levels in close proximity, but that's not something you'd likely see in the real world. Dan, it would never, ever happen. Yeah, and then you know somebody's going to send us a photo of some weird place that we've never heard of. Then that's fine. (laughs) They can send, I want someone to send a photo of six bridges like I've seen, because I've seen those layouts. Yeah. And you look at it and you're like, oh, well, that's kind of cool, but totally bogus, you know? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. If your goal is to model a specific prototype bridge, you may need to do some scratch building, as most of the bridge kits out there are somewhat generic. However, some prototype bridges can be closely approximated using commercially available bridge components, so it's really a matter of what bridge you're modeling and how close do you want to get. There are places where the track on a bridge is built on a curve, but it's important to note that the individual structural components of bridges are usually straight, especially bridges made of wood or metal. It's rare to have turnouts and other special track work on bridges. There are a few bridges with turnouts on them, but it's definitely the exception and not the rule. Many bridges, however, do have guardrails. We talked a little about those in the track episode. Guardrails are designed to keep a derailed wheel on the bridge so that locomotives or rolling stock will not plunge over the edge. Gantlet track is another thing we mentioned in the track episode. Gantlet track is used in places where a double track line needs to cross a single track bridge. This is something I haven't seen modeled too often but it could create some operational interest on a double track layout. One thing that's really important when installing a bridge in your layout is to make sure that the track work is smooth over the bridge. I've seen plenty of model bridges with visible vertical kinks in the track at one end of the bridge or the other, and that can cause unwanted uncoupling and other problems. Taking the time to get things lined up properly is well worth it. Also, it's important that the bridge is properly supported. The abutments and bridge piers should have bench work under them, not just scenery. So anyway, hopefully that'll give you a little bit better idea about some different bridge types and how they can be used on a model railroad. Oh, for sure. You know, usually I'm used to burning bridges, but this time I was learning bridges, Yeah. right? Right. So I I did learn something as usual. And, you know, I think still, though, my favorite is the truss bridge. Yeah, they just cool. Yeah, they just, they look so strong, you know, always. And there's so many, I've seen so many, and they're all just a little bit different. Yeah. So, but it's pretty cool, though. So uh, what are we going to learn about next time? Uh, We're going to talk about standards. Oh, hey, that's a good idea. Uh, I have a request then. Okay. Is it possible that we could get some of the um, product review critics that watch us on YouTube to watch that episode? Uh, Well, we'll see, I guess. (laughs) Right? So that way they can actually understand why coupler height matters and wheel gauge and all that instead of just being idiots. (laughs) <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> okay uh hey uh i have to get to my next class can i go sure okay <laughs> bye <laughs>